Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about increasing and decreasing functions. And so we're going to start with talking about increasing functions. And an increasing function is a function where if we were to pick two values of x, let's say x1 and x2, where that first value of x we picked, x1, is less than the value of x2, then the y value of that first x value is going to be less than the y value of the second value of x that we picked. So for example, if we were to look at our first graph right here, f of x equals x, and I picked two values of x, let's say we have x1 right here and x2 right here, the y value of x1 would be at this point, let's just say that that's y equals one, and then this value of x would be up to this value of y on our function, and that would be, let's say, y equals two, right? It's going to be higher up on our y-axis than the previous value of y. And so this is true. We picked two values of x where the first one is less than the second one, and we found that the y value of the first one is less than the y value of the second point. And so f of x equals x is an increasing function. No matter what two values of x we pick, whichever is the lesser one is going to have the lesser y value as well. The same is going to be true for this function over here. We have the exponential function, f of x equals two to the power of x, and as we pick larger values of x, you'll see that we get larger values of y. As we go from left to right on our function, we are moving upward in the y direction. And so we have verified that both of these functions are increasing functions. And so we sort of looked at that from an algebra perspective there, where we were just looking at the x values and their y values to describe the increasing behavior. But now we can describe this from a calculus perspective. If you look at the slope of these functions, right, the slope is the change between each point. The slope is positive, right, in both cases, the slope is moving in a positive direction. If we took the derivative of this function, right, the derivative of a function is the slope of that function. If we took the derivative of x, it would be equal to one, and one is a positive value. So for this entire function, the slope is positive. And the same would be true for this function if you were to take the derivative and choose a value of x to plug into it. And so what we find here is that for an increasing function, the slope or the first derivative is going to be positive. But what about decreasing functions? Well, for decreasing functions, the opposite is going to be true. If we were to pick two values of x, right, where x1 is less than x2, in this case, the y value for our first value of x is going to be greater than the y value for our second value of x. And that would be true for this function here. We have f of x equals negative x, where our slope is negative, right? If we picked our first value of x to be right here and our second value of x to be here, the y value for x1 is higher up or greater than the y value for x2. And so we would find that the change between these points is negative. The slope is negative, so this function is decreasing. And the same is going to be true for this function, negative two to the power of x, which is an exponential function similar to the one we looked at that was increasing, except it is decreasing in the y direction as we pick larger values of x. Because once again, if we move from left to right along our function, we are moving in the downward direction, which means we are decreasing. So whether you wanna think about it in that way, where as we move along the x-axis from left to right, we're moving downward in the y direction, as opposed to moving up in an increasing function, or if you wanna think about it, from the calculus perspective of slope, where in this case, a decreasing function has a negative slope. And so that means that the first derivative of a function that is decreasing would be negative. And so then there's actually one more type of function that we can describe, which isn't as common as the previous two, and that is a constant function, where if we were to pick two values of x, where x1 is less than x2, their y values would be the same. And that's true for functions like f of x equals two, where for any value of x we pick, they're gonna have the same y value because that is the whole function. It's just the same y value forever. From a negative infinity to infinity, it's going to be two. And so this is what we call a constant function, and you'll notice here, the slope is neither negative or positive. In fact, the slope is zero. A straight line or a horizontal line has the slope of zero. And so in this case, we would say that for a constant function, the slope or the first derivative is equal to zero. And so now that we have looked at increasing, decreasing, and constant functions and how they relate to slope and the first derivative, we can come up with the following three guidelines. We find that if the derivative of a function is greater than zero, then the function is increasing. If the derivative is less than zero or negative, then that function is decreasing. And if the derivative is equal to zero, 
then that function is constant or just not changing, right? It's the same value forever. But we can actually also apply these guidelines not only to an entire function, but to intervals of functions or sections of functions that we might be interested in. So if we found that the derivative for a particular interval of a function was greater than zero, then that part of the function is increasing. If an interval of a function has a slope that is negative, then that particular part of the function is decreasing. And then if we found for some reason that the interval of a function has a slope of zero, it's very uncommon, you will probably never find that, but then we would say that that part of the function is constant. But again, you probably won't see that. And so we can actually use these guidelines to describe the behavior of different functions in terms of where they are increasing and decreasing for different intervals. And so let's take a look at some examples of how we would do that visually with a graph. So here we have two graphs with two different functions, and they aren't any specific function. You'll see they are unspecified. But what we're going to do is we're just going to analyze them and see what intervals of these functions are either increasing or decreasing by looking at their slope, right? And so for our first function here, we see that up until the point of x equals zero, our slope is negative, right? As we move from left to right, we started with a larger value of y, and then we moved to a smaller value of y. And then the opposite is true for after x equals zero, right? As we go from left to right, we are getting larger values of y, so our slope is positive. And so the way we would write this is that for all values of x from negative infinity to zero, our function is decreasing. And then for the values of our function from zero to infinity, our function is increasing. Because the slope is negative up until x equals zero, and then the slope is positive past x equals zero. So from all our negative values of x all the way up to zero, it's decreasing and then from zero to all of our positive values of x, it is increasing. But how about this function? How would we analyze this function and determine the intervals where it is increasing or decreasing? Well, we'll do the same thing. If we were to follow the function from left to right, we'll see that at the beginning here, we have a positive slope, right? We are moving in the positive direction along the y-axis, and that's going to continue until we get to this point right here, and then we're going downward. Our slope is now negative up until this point, right? As we move along our x-axis, we are moving downward in the y direction. And then after that, we are increasing again. We have a positive slope. And so now what we can write is that from negative infinity to this value right here, negative two, we are increasing. And then from negative two, which would be right here, to positive two, we are decreasing. And so that would be a decreasing interval. And then from positive two to infinity, we are increasing once again. And so we would write from two to positive infinity, we are increasing. And so in this case, for this function, we had three separate intervals where we could describe the behavior of this function in terms of increasing or decreasing. It started out increasing, then it switched to decreasing, and then it switched back to increasing. And so that's how we can use the slope of functions visually to see where they are increasing or decreasing. But how would we go about this if we didn't want to use a graph at all? If we wanted to do this purely analytically, if we had a specific function, f of x, how would we determine the intervals where it is increasing and decreasing? Well, in order to do that, I want you to notice something here. Every time our function here switched from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing, it hit a point on the function where the slope was zero, right? We hit this critical point. Remember when we discussed extrema on an interval that relative extrema would occur at these critical values where the slope was zero on a function, right? If we were to draw a tangent line here, that tangent line would have the slope of zero. And so that's true for this function, but it's also true for this function, right? The point where we switch from being decreasing to increasing is this x equals zero right here, where if we drew a tangent line, the slope would be zero. And so what we learn here is that if we find the critical values of a function, we can use that to help us create intervals that we can then look at the slope for to determine whether they are increasing or decreasing. And so that's what I'm going to show you next. We're going to look at an analytical problem where we find those critical values and we determine where the function is increasing and decreasing. So let's do that next. So here we have the function f of x equals negative x squared plus x, and we want to determine the intervals where the given function is increasing and decreasing, right? And so in order to do this, we are going to first take the derivative of our function and then set it equal to zero, right? Because that's how we find our critical values. Our critical values are the points on our function 
where the slope is zero. So we first need to find the derivative, which represents the slope of our function, and then set it equal to zero. So if we take the derivative, we'll have f prime of x is equal to negative 2x plus 1. Right, the derivative of negative x squared would be negative 2x if we use the power rule, and then a derivative of x would just be 1. And so then if we set this derivative equal to zero, and we solve for x, we will find our critical value, or critical values, sometimes it might be more than one, for this function. In this case, I think it's just going to be one value though, because if we add 2x to both sides, we'll have 2x equal to one, and then we can divide both sides by two to find that x is equal to one half. And so what we find here is that we have one critical value for this function at x equals one half. And so what that means is at that value of one half, our function has the potential, it's not guaranteed, to switch from being an increasing function to a decreasing function, or from a decreasing function to an increasing function. And so to really analyze this, let me draw a number line here, and I think that's going to help us visualize what's going on. So if we draw this number line here, and then we label our critical value as if this line here was the x-axis, so just to help you visualize, I'm gonna put an x here, so you can kind of think of this as the x-axis, then that would mean that all the values in this direction would be all the values of x less than one half, and all the values in this direction would be the values of x greater than one half. And so what we have are two different intervals for this function that we are interested in. We have the interval from negative infinity all the way up to one half, and then the interval for all the values from one half to positive infinity. And so what we have are two intervals here. We have negative infinity to one half, and then we have one half to infinity. And so now that we have these intervals, what do we do, right? This is cool and all, but how do we use this to determine whether a function is increasing or decreasing on these intervals? Well, remember, we said that if the slope of a function is positive on an interval, then it's increasing, but if the slope is negative, it's decreasing. And so all we have to do is pick a value between negative infinity and one half, plug it into our derivative, and see whether the answer or the slope is negative or positive. And so we'll start by picking a value between negative infinity and one half. So let's see, I'm gonna pick zero, so we'll do f prime of zero, and you could have picked any value, you could have picked one fourth or negative two, any value between negative infinity and one half. The possibilities are endless, but I'm gonna pick zero because that's a pretty nice number to plug in here, and if we plug it into our derivative, we'll have zero plus one, and so that would be equal to one, and one is a positive number, so now we know that our derivative for this interval is positive, which means that the function is increasing on that interval, right? The slope is positive. And then let's test a value between one half and infinity. In this case, I'll use one, so f prime of one is equal to what? If we plug one into our derivative, negative two times one would be negative two, plus one would be negative one, and so that value is negative. Our slope is negative, and so that means that our function is decreasing on this interval because it has a negative slope. And so now we have successfully figured out where our function is either increasing or decreasing. In this case, this function, negative x squared plus x, is increasing from negative infinity to one half, and it's decreasing from one half to infinity. And so that would be the answer in this case. Let's look at another example before we conclude this lesson. So in this case, we have f of x equals x cubed minus three halves x squared, and we wanna do the same thing. We wanna determine the intervals where the given function is increasing and decreasing. And so we'll start this the same way. We'll take the derivative of our function and then set it equal to zero and solve for x. So we'll have f prime of x is equal to three x squared minus three x. That would be the derivative of this function if we use the power rule for each of these terms. And then if we set this equal to zero and we solve for x, we'll have zero equals that derivative. And then I see that we have a common factor of three x in each of our terms. And so I'm going to pull that out. We'll have three x times x minus one, right? We had a three x in each one of these terms. So if I pulled three X out of here, we're left with one, and I pulled three X out of here, we're left with just X. And then if I set each one of these quantities equal to zero, we'll have three X equals zero, which means X equals zero, and then X minus one equals zero, which gives us that X equals one. And so now we have two critical values for this function. And so now our number line is going to look a little bit different. So if I draw the number line in this case, we're gonna have two values of x to label. So we'll start by labeling our lower x value, so we'll have zero, and then we'll label our higher value, one. And so now we see we're gonna have 
three intervals that we're going to test, right? We have a section from all the negative values of x up to zero, then all the values from zero to one, and then all the values from one to positive infinity. So the three intervals that I just said are negative infinity to zero, zero to one, and then from one to infinity. So now we're gonna test for the sign of the slope in each of these intervals to determine where this function is increasing and decreasing. So let's see, if I choose a value between negative infinity and zero to plug into our derivative, I'm gonna pick negative one, so we'll have f prime of negative one. And so if we plug that into our derivative, we'll have three times negative one squared minus three times negative one, and that's going to be equal to three plus three, which is equal to six. And so I'll clean this up and we'll say that our slope here is equal to six, which is a positive slope, so our function is increasing on this interval. And then I'll pick a value between zero and one. So in this case, I'll pick one half. So if we do f prime of one half, and we plug that into our derivative, we'll have three times one half squared minus three times one half, and that will be equal to three times one fourth minus three halves, and this would be equal to three fourths minus three halves, which would be negative three fourths. And so I'll just rewrite this, and our answer is negative three fourths. And so since that slope is negative, that means our function is decreasing on this interval. And then finally, let's test the value between one and infinity and see if that is increasing or decreasing. So I'm gonna choose two in this case. So I have f prime of two, and that's going to be equal to three times two squared minus three times two, which is going to be equal to three times four minus six, and three times four is 12, minus six is six. So this one is also going to be six, and that is also a positive slope, which means that our function is increasing on this interval. And so in this case, this would be our final answer. We found that for this interval from negative infinity to zero, our function is increasing. For the interval from zero to one, it's decreasing. And then for the interval from one to infinity, it is increasing. And so that's the process. That's how you take a function and find the intervals where it is increasing or decreasing analytically. And so that's all I had for this lesson video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. If you wanna see some more examples, I'll have an example video linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description that you can click on. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.